Hi, welcome back to the channel. If you're new to the channel, then welcome. And if you're not, well, welcome back. Anyway, if you're here, you're probably here because you've already watched this video. I'll put a link to it at the top of the page. Anyway, in this video, I showed you my new 12 meter mast uh, with the cobweb on top of it. And what I said I would do is come back at a later date and having done some testing, conclude what the antenna is like when it's raised, medium raised and fully raised. So anyway, I've had the ability to do that and here's the results. So let's take a look. So what I was going to do was get a model done in MMANA. However, doing a little bit of searching, I found that this guy has already done it. So rather than reinvent the wheel, I thought I would just give you a link to his excellent YouTube channel. He's called Callum and he's the DX Commander. I'm sure you already know him. So that's the theory out of the way. So the first thing I did, I had a look at the SWR and I compared the SWR using a piece of software called SWR Plotter 6K by K9DUR. Um, as you know, I run a Flex 6300. So this is a piece of software that's specifically designed to integrate with the Flex and basically just plot an SWR. So as you can see here, it's going through the process of plotting the SWR for a particular band and it records the results. So the idea was to have the um, antenna in three different elevation states to compare the SWR at fully raised, halfway and fully lowered. So here's the results. So I've tried to synchronize them up as much as possible so you can actually compare them um, face on. So this clearly is 20 meters. This is 17 meters, so the top graph is fully raised at 12 meters. The mid graph is, well, six and a half meters, and the lowest position is at the bottom, three and a half meters. Feel free to pause the video and go back and, and scrutinize the actual uh, values, but I think you'll see that it does show that there is a big difference in SWR from fully raised to fully lowered. Now, that could be because of the close proximity to the ridge tiles, or it could just be because it's closer to the ground. Not sure. But anyway, um, what you'll see on my 10 meter graph is the dip is quite sharp. It's quite a high Q. So I've tuned it for the part of the band that I would use on 10 meters. So anyway, that's the theory out of the way. So let's put it into practice. Does it work? So to test it, I did um, some WSJTX. And using PSK Reporter, I could see where my signals were being received. So this is it after around about 20 minutes of transmitting in its lowest state on 20 meters in the middle of the afternoon. Then what I did was I fully raised the antenna and transmitted for a further 20 minutes on exactly the same frequency, 20 meters again, and this was the results. Lastly, I went back to the antenna and fully lowered it again and transmitted again for a further 20 minutes or so, and these were the results of that. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed that video. It certainly showed me a few things and uh, I think it does conclude that adding a few extra meters, trying to get that cobweb up to 10 meters or thereabouts does really, really make a difference. So anyway, if you have enjoyed the video, then please give us a thumbs up for it. It does inspire me to carry on making more videos. If you haven't enjoyed it, well, go ahead and put the thumbs down because what that does is it stops you having to watch more videos like this. And if you do enjoy videos like this, then think about going ahead and subscribing because you'll get notified then of future videos. Okay, anyway, stay safe, take care and 7-3. Bye-bye.